Good morning, and thank you for joining us for another online service. We're closer to returning to in-person worship services, uh, but as I continue to say, please do not take this service we have right now, whether it's uh, on your TV, whether it's just on your cell phone, wherever you're watching this, please continue to take these services real, take them seriously, and I really, really believe that they will bless you just as much as an in-person in -person worship service can. So again, I, I know I say this, but just don't take this for granted. Don't take this time. See this as a blessing that even in the midst of all this, we still get to do something uh, like this. We still get to have a service. We still get to worship God and in a way that maybe not, not exactly be the same in our eyes, but to him, it's all the same. This week is actually Pentecost, and if you would have told me way back before Easter that we would not be having a service on Good Friday, on Easter morning, uh, Pentecost, I mean, I, I would have called you crazy if you would have said there's not going to be a Sunday morning church service. And then this whole mess happens, and, and, and again, I mean, I know we're still having a service, but what I'm saying is if you would have told me that people would have just not come and sat in the pews on those mornings, I would have, again, said that you were crazy. But we are in a situation now that I don't think anybody could have predicted was going to happen with the idea that nobody at all would be going into a worship service, into a sanctuary, and taking a seat in a pew on these mornings. And yet, still, it's encouraging that there are more and more churches that are opening up in their own right, and they are doing it uh, in a way that is comfortable and following the social distancing guidelines. So I encourage uh, all those churches out there that are doing these things, please continue to think about the health of those people that attend your church services, and uh, please continue to put those people first. And when we do eventually open, we are going to do the same thing for you all. But as Pentecost Sunday goes, this is a time that the Holy Spirit came and met the disciples. And it's so interesting this time because right before Jesus ascended into heaven, he gave the disciples a command. He told them, go to Jerusalem and wait on the Holy Spirit. And, you know, after all this time, Jesus dies because they went to Jerusalem. They fled from Jerusalem. They honestly were living in fear for days after Christ died. And honestly, they probably still didn't feel that comfortable after he came back. And yet he tells them, go to the place that you're most afraid of right now and wait on something. And so they go and they wait and they pray. And isn't it odd that the last time they were in Jerusalem and Christ said, I'm going to be gone for a certain amount of time, wait on me to get back, that they didn't do a very good job of waiting. They hid, they lived in fear, uh, they denied him, they, uh, they did a lot of things that honestly was not in the guidelines of what Christ would have wanted from them. But our God works in ways of reconciliation, and he likes to redeem. So he told them to go back to the place to where they were last afraid, to where he was last denied, to where he was convicted and hung upon a cross and go and wait on something there. Go and wait on the Holy Spirit. And so rather than going back and waiting in fear, they go back and they wait in prayer and they pray continuously until the Holy Spirit showed up. You know, we're living in a time where we're walking into places that honestly are scary that we are living in a world that is scary. I mean, not only are we dealing with sicknesses and diseases, but we're also dealing with hatred and with racism and with evil and with depression and with anxiety and uh, all the different amount of things that are going on right now in this moment in the last few days. And yet we're living in this time and we come to a online church service and we praise God for all the things he's doing in our life. And 
I think it's remarkable that it's on this Sunday that we talk about a time when the Holy Spirit came down. And we, right now, should be praying for the Holy Spirit to fall down on us in this moment. And you know, it's not a moment to where the disciples, they sat there and they were like, well, no, this isn't how I want it to go. This isn't the way that I want to do this. We're in this upper room. Why do we have to be here? Why do we have to be in this place? Why do I have to continue to play? Why do I have to be in Jerusalem? Why is Jesus gone again? Why is all these things happening? But instead, they just faithfully waited and they prayed. And what an amazing way to respond to a moment like that, to remain in prayer continuously until the Holy Spirit showed up. And so I fully believe that the Holy Spirit is ready and available. So it's up to us to, in this moment, be faithful in prayer, be faithful in our belief that God is in control, that he has got intentions for us that are very, very good. And so they followed what Christ told them to do, and the Holy Spirit showed up. So it's time for us to follow and allow the Holy Spirit to become available to us and to be present to us. And through that, make it known that when they were blessed, when it came upon them, they went out and said what the world needed to hear. And I tell you, there's a lot of people in this world that need to hear the right thing right now. And it's amazing that when they went outside, everybody heard the right thing that they needed to hear in their own tongue. And I feel that we like to go out and say what we want to say in our language. You know, we want to say it the way that we want it heard. But I think in this time, it's very important that we go out and say the things. Let the Holy Spirit lead us in saying the right things that people need to hear. Not the way that we want to say it, but the way that the Holy Spirit wants it to be heard. And so I really, really want to encourage you during this time uh, to be faithful, be steadfast in prayer, and to continue to have faith that we will get through this. We will come out on the other side. But that this is the waiting. This is the period that Christ is saying, go to Jerusalem and wait on the Holy Spirit to show up. Are you going to be faithful during this time? Are you going to pray continuously during this time? Are you going to be hopeful and faithful and sure that the Holy Spirit is going to show up? And they did exactly that and the Holy Spirit showed up. So let's do exactly that and let's let the Holy Spirit show up. And we're going to be back eventually. We're going to be as normal as things can be again. But as I said, right now, this is the testing. This is the waiting. And God is putting us through something, maybe not intentionally, maybe not to punish us, but any circumstance, any situation is a test on us that we get to grow sharper through our perseverance. And now is the time to persevere and get out, get out on the other side. So God bless you. I hope to see you all again really soon. As I said, we are inching closer to coming back to in-person in worship services. But as the United Methodist Church, we are following what uh, the bishop is asking us to do. And so we will remain faithful in that, that as I told a couple of my church members that were disappointed, that God is in control of this and that if there's a reason that this gets continued to be pushed back, that God has good intentions for it. So we will come back at the right time and it will be a blessed time and it will be a right time and I can assure you the waiting that we had in this moment the way that we responded to that situation will really decide the way that the Holy Spirit becomes present in our life and the way that we show the Holy Spirit to the people out there that need to hear it God bless you have an amazing morning
this morning singing fill my cup lord This is a, an exciting day. It's a day of celebration for the church. Uh, it's a day in which uh, uh, we celebrate the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon all flesh. The prophecy of Joel comes to bear. And uh, the prophet said that in those days, in this day of Pentecost, that the Holy Spirit would be poured up, uh, out upon all flesh and people would hear from God, people would experience God. And this is a new beginning uh, that God of the Old Testament was God for us. God in the New Testament was God with us. He was Emmanuel. And now God in the book of Acts in the beginning of the start of the new church is that God through the Holy Spirit now comes to live within us. And that is so exciting. The story begins in chapter uh, two of the book of Acts. We call it the Acts of the Apostles but it can also be called the acts of the Holy Spirit because it is the Holy Spirit at work in the life of these believers, empowering them and equipping them to do the work that God has called them to do. So we begin by reading in chapter two of the book of Acts. When on the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place and suddenly like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. There seemed to be uh, tongues of fire that separated and came to rest upon them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. May the Lord add to the reading of the word, his blessing. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I love that passage of scripture uh, because where the disciples after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, they don't seem to quite to know what to do. And Jesus had told them to go and wait in Jerusalem uh, and uh, to be in prayer, uh, to wait upon the promise of the Holy Spirit. And I, I think when I think about this passage, I think about the church today in our world because of this uh, virus. Uh, we are practicing social distancing. We're not able to come and to have worship in our sanctuaries. So we're in a period of waiting like those early disciples. And I just hope it's my prayer that the church is in prayer, the church is in earnest, that the church is seeking God because whenever we do have the opportunity to come back together, I believe that the church will be in a position to really share the gospel and the message of Jesus Christ. I believe more people will even return to the church. I don't know what God's going to do, but I'm going to trust that God will do what is good. Amen? Amen. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we pray that you would just bless the church today. As we celebrate the birth of the church into our world, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, 
and the, the, the real work of God moving in the hearts and lives of people to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. What a blessing, how exciting. Lord, we ask your blessing upon the hearing and the reading of the word in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A young pastor served in his community as a chaplain to a local fire department. And one night his first call came and he jumped into his car and sped off into the night. Well, a police cruiser with lights flashing pulled the young man over and the police officer walked up to him very slowly on the driver's side of the window. He leaned in and he said, well, sir, where is the fire? Where is the fire? Without hesitation, the young pastor replied, 216 Sherman Ridge Road. It caught the police officer off guard. He stammered a little, oh, oh, well then, oh, okay then, follow me. <laughs> Where's the fire? It's a common euthanism used in three different ways. In the case of the police officer, it meant, what's the big hurry? Where's the fire? What's the big hurry? Others used the phrase to ask, what's all the excitement about? And another approach using this saying is unique. Uh, and we say, Where's the passion or the energy? Now, any of these three questions is appropriate for us to ask on this Sunday, the day that we celebrate Pentecost. Where, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> where's the fire? So the story of Pentecost in the second chapter of the book of Acts has been known as the birth of the church. And the story challenges us with the question that we can look at it three different ways. Where is the fire? So for the first use of the question where the police officer is challenging the motorist to explain why he was going so fast, today is a good day to address that question like the police officer. We too may assume that there really isn't a fire when there actually is one. Where's the fire? What's the big hurry? Well, you recall the reason that God sent the Holy Spirit upon the disciples after Jesus ascended into heaven was because God's mission on earth still needed to be fulfilled. There was still work that needed to be done. Jesus, when he called his disciples, he had equipped them and trained them to be fishers of men. So when Jesus died, when he rose again, he ascended back into heaven and he gave to them the Holy Spirit it meant that Jesus' work physically that he was doing on earth was done. He was going to be back with the Father. But through the Holy Spirit, Christ would come to live within us and empower us to do the works that he had done. Remember, Jesus says that greater works you will do when I go to be with the Father because the Holy Spirit is going to be upon you. So even though Jesus won the victory of sin and death on the cross and the empty tomb, God's overall plan did not change. God still wants to work in and through ordinary people like you and me to do extraordinary things and to make a difference in our world. When Jesus left the disciples, he didn't tell them that uh, it was a nice knowing them, you know, just take it easy because there was nothing left for them to do. No, he told them to go into the world, to baptize, to teach, and to serve. Jesus was telling them that there was more work that has to be done. Listen, church, there's more work for us to do. The difference would be that they would have a Holy Spirit to empower them to make a difference in our world. And I want to tell you that the same Holy Spirit that empowered those disciples in that day to preach the gospel, to go out into their world and turn it upside down for Jesus Christ. It's the same Holy Spirit that lives and flows within us. We need Pentecost. And we need Pentecost because it helps us to answer the question, where is our fire? Where's the fire or what's the excitement all about? Well, at Pentecost, the excitement was because the gospel is spreading. The church is being birthed by the Holy Spirit to carry the good news of Jesus Christ into all the world. People's daily lives need, and their needs were being met. And the Lord was adding to the church daily those who were being saved. Can you imagine being a part of a church 
who's excited about the good news, who spends the whole week going out into the world, sharing the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, meeting the needs of those who are in need, the poor and the hungry, and those that are down and outcast and who are hurting, delivering those who are in bondage. And then it says the Lord would then add to the church daily those who are being saved. What an exciting church. What an exciting time. Where is the fire? Where is the excitement? Of course, the excitement these disciples have comes from the Holy Spirit of God being poured out into our lives. I know it may not be as exciting for you to sit in your living room or wherever you may be viewing uh, this uh, video and hearing this message today. But God is calling us out into our world. He fills us with the Holy Spirit. He equips us and he sends us out. And that's exciting. You see, the Holy Spirit fills our mouth with the word of God, the good news of Jesus Christ. The reason the disciples were speaking in tongues and causing such a commotion in downtown Jerusalem is all related to that good news, the life the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We have a good news faith. Let me say that again. We have a good news faith. <clears throat> we have a faith that turns heads and leads people to wonder why these people in this church are filled with so much joy and hope in a world that is filled with so much bad news. You know, it's easy to get on the bad news bandwagon. It's easy to see the, the bad side of all things. But if we could just step back a minute and see that even in the midst of this pandemic, the good things that God is doing, you're not gonna hear about it on the evening news. But I wanna tell you, God through the Holy Spirit is at work in our world. God through the Holy Spirit is still at work in our church. God through the Holy Spirit is still at work in your life. And that's good news, and that's exciting. And that is a wonderful faith to have. No wonder that Pentecost Sunday is often associated with the joy of a birthday party, a celebration. It's a time for us to celebrate and open the gift of the Holy Spirit who wants to be active and at work in our daily lives. After a worship service one morning, a church member said to me at the door, what a great day to be at church, Pastor. I felt so much happiness and so much joy in this place. You know, that one comment made my heart sing the whole entire week. Who said that church should be something that we have to endure rather than celebrate? We should be celebrating. We have a good news faith every Sunday is a celebration of what God has done and what God is doing in our life and in our world. It doesn't matter that we're not able to be here right now. God has a plan, but God is at work in your life. God wants to fill you with joy, to fill you with excitement, to give you a passion, to give you a vision so that you can see where God is at work in our world. What's all the excitement about? We're on fire, or we should be on fire, because we're celebrating the good and greatest news the world has ever heard, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, because without Christ, there is no hope. It also answers the question as to why we can be filled with joy when there's so much negativity and so much pain in our world. We have a good news faith. Don't forget that. Where's the fire? What's the big hurry? Well, it's because we live in a world of hurt and justice, and injustice, I should say. And that's where the church needs to be stepping in. The church has the answers. The church has the hope. The church has the healing. We should be the agent in the world that's going to people who may be hurting, who's experiencing loss of loved ones, who's experiencing loss of income and job. And, and we should be that one who is the light of the world, who is the salt of the earth, that we are to be out there among the people saying, listen, 
We have a God that works all things to good. And we have a God that wants to be at work in your life. The work of the Holy Spirit in the lives of those early believers reminds us that there are fires of injustice in our community, in our world, where we are called to offer God's healing love and to render our service. The Holy Spirit was at work in these believers' lives, helping them to overcome ethnic and racial, economic and social divisions. God was at work. God sent Peter, a Jew, you might recall, to the house of a Roman centurion Roman centurion by the name of Cornelius, who was a Gentile. And Peter didn't want to go because he didn't believe that, 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 that he believed that Jews, uh, uh, should, I should say, uh, were God's people. They were the covenant people, that the Gentiles did not have access to God, that they were unclean in all that they do. But God sent Peter there after he get, had given him Peter a vision to preach the gospel. The Holy Spirit fell. And Cornelius became the first Gentile uh, convert to faith in the book of Acts. Peter makes this glorious statement in Acts chapter 10, verse 34 and 35, right after this experience. God had revealed something through the Holy Spirit to Peter. And he said, I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You see, the Holy Spirit is at work in the lives of believers, helping the poor and the hungry. The church becomes that mission launching pad where the least fortunate, the poor and the hungry had their needs met. This was a powerful witness in the church, in their community. The church came together. They attended to the apostles' uh, teaching and doctrine. They studied the word. They prayed. They met. They worshiped together. And the Holy Spirit was being poured out. God was adding to their witness uh, uh, those who were being saved daily. This was a powerful witness in the church and their community. It's a still a powerful witness for our church and our community. Listen, our church has a witness in this community. And we have Elijah's pantry who, who and I just want to give them some praise this morning because I, I tell you, even though the church is shut down, we're not having worship services. Elijah pantry has kept on going. We're still feeding the hungry, taking care of the needs in the community. We don't give them enough praise about what they're doing. We have men's and women's group, groups in our church that raise money. They do fundraisers and, and they give to organizations like uh, 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 the, the Waterfront Mission and Soup Kitchens and, order, and, and Teen Challenge. We also have groups of ladies that come and fix food and they go to the Washburn Center and they meet the needs of people out in the world. And it's a powerful witness for our community. People give to the altar fund. We're able to help meet spiritual and physical needs of people in our community. People who are a part of the unity movement in this community, it's been going on for a couple of years, who rally around the central truth of the gospel, that we're all one in Christ, that we can set aside racial and religious and denominational barriers that separate us. This is the work of the Holy Spirit, that we have one thing in common, and that is we celebrate and worship together a resurrected Christ who still has power to save today. The question was once asked, if your church closes its doors, would the people in the community know the difference? Think about that for a moment. Think about that. If your church closed its doors, would the people in the community know the difference? Well, I would say yes. Uh, one day, one evening, uh, actually a lady and her children who were here at Elijah's Pantry came out and was coming across to the parking lot with their groceries in their hand. And they asked me, are you the pastor? And I said, yes, I am. And they said, well, we've been coming to your church for help and for food for a long time because my church doesn't do what your church is doing. And she said this, she said, please 
Tell your congregation what a blessing that they are to so many people in this community. Pastor, she said, and her voice trembled a little bit. And you could see that her eyes were watering as though tears and moisture was coming. And she said, I thank the Lord every day for this church. So the question, if your church closes its doors, will the people in the community know the difference? And I would say yes. Why? Because we are in being empowered by the Holy Spirit. And even though we do not meet right now for worship in this place, we're still doing ministry in our community. And the people in our community know the difference. Where's the fire? Where's the passion? Where's the energy? Well, at Pentecost, it also gives what, uh, what gives us that energy and passion that leads us to sort of act like naive teenagers who believe that they can change the world. And we should believe that way. No matter our age, no matter how long that we've been a part of the church, Pentecost Sunday reminds us to allow the Holy Spirit of God to burn within us so that we, we can believe that with God's help, we can change our world. We can change our lives. We can change our family and we can make a difference in our community. Where's the fire? It's wherever we see injustice and brokenness. And as a church, we're offering the blood at, of Jesus Christ. We're offering the joy. We're offering the hope and the help and the peace of Christ. Where's the fire? It's in our hearts because we have a good news faith. And it's when we dare to believe that we can make a difference in our community, in our world. Where's the fire this morning? I hope it's in your heart. I hope the Holy Spirit has encouraged you today. I hope the Holy Spirit will empower you and equip you to be the church. And while we're waiting to come back, like the disciples waiting in that upper room, let us be in prayer. Let us be in fervent prayer. Let us be seeking God to see what God wants to do in our lives and in our church and in our world and especially in and through our community. God bless you today. May the fire of Pentecost burn bright in your life. Amen and amen. Sings